Hi, my name is Sasha. Welcome back to my channel, Sasha Reads, and this is a Minotaur Romance reading vlog. I'm reading three monster romances featuring Minotaurs. I thought this will be fun because my very first monster romance that I can remember was a Minotaur romance and it just got me back into reading again and I fell in love with the monster romance genre and yeah the book that started it all was Morning Glory Milking Farm by C.M. Nascosta. It was 2021 it was October, end of September possibly, and I hadn't read a book in a while. I had pretty much completely stopped reading just because life was just crazy. I was pregnant for the fourth time. I had just started a new job. I had two kids to look after and my brain was just not, not comprehending any sort of books. So when I saw Riley Marie talking about the silly, goofy monster romance, I was like, hmm, I've got KU, let's give it a go. And yeah, it was silly, goofy. It was also really sweet. I'm just so happy that I picked it up because I pretty much have been reading ever since. I'm not actually sure if I've had a big, long gap like that again which I think it also got me back into doing booktube again and just then making all of these friends on this channel too. I just, I love the internet so much. So yeah, that's why I wanted to start this vlog. I am actually going to be reading Blue Ribbon Romance in this vlog, which is the male POV from Morning Glory Milking Farm. I will also be reading An Arc of a Yulian Sister's Guide to Getting Married by L.E. Eldridge that is about a minotaur king and a neighboring human princess fake engaged to solve a mystery. And then I'll also be reading Escaping the Friend Zone by Emily Antoinette, which is a brother's best friend and also has like the daddy dom little girl kink in it. I have already read all these three books. I just did not film an intro. So here we are today. I just washed my hair. Um, I do need to dye it, please. I know I bought the dye today. It's okay. I hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed reading these books and making this video. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into book number one. Hello. So I am about 30, 35% of the way into a Yulian sister's guide to getting married. I'm enjoying it. It's an arc. So I am going to disregard some of the grammatical errors that have happened because I'm hoping that it was fixed up for the release because I'm pretty sure it has been released now. Other than that, I'm enjoying it. So you've got Zarius, Zarian, who is the orc, orc, he's not an orc, he's a minotaur. This whole vlog is about minotaur. He's a minotaur king, but he doesn't like being called king. He's like the grand Clorak. And he's been trading these like mage stones with the humans. He's come to the human lands because something's happened to the last shipment and he thinks it's thieves. And so he's like investigating with the queens at the human lands. That's where he meets Sorsha. Now Sorsha is one of the princesses. So she's the daughter of the queens and um, she just wants to be a knight. She wants to just live her life protecting her lands or whatever, but she can't because she's a princess and it's not the done thing. After one night, Sorsha and Zorian kind of hatch a plan to get fake engaged so he can investigate his people in his lands because like Grand Clarics can't go to Clarics places unless he gets engaged and he has to like parade his mate around sort of thing. 
So that's what's happening. Sorsha wants to pretend to be his maid or fiance so that Sorsha wants to solve this thing so that her parents can see that she is going to be a good knight. So that's why she's doing it and that's why he's doing it. So that's all happened. I'm pretty sure that's all in the synopsis anyway. We've had the one horse trope, which is very fun. They're kind of like, oh, Sorsha is a little bit annoying because she's like, I can do everything myself. And I'm like, please just for the romantic in me, please just let him do things for you. Like take you down from the horse because the horses are gigantic. But we've had the one horse trope. We got robbed by the one bed trope. There was one bed. She slept on the couch. What the heck? That's pretty much all that's happened so far. So other than that, I am very excited to see because they've had like glances because it's dual POV and he keeps talking about like his attraction to her. And he's like, this isn't real. And she's kind of noticed things here and there now because they've like been close quarters, like close proximity. And yeah, I'm excited to see what happens. Okay, so I just finished a Yulin sister's guide to getting married. I really enjoyed it. I think Lexi's writing has significantly improved since when I first read Washed Up with the Kraken. It's insane. Taking Because I just finished a book and I wanted to talk about it. Where? Yeah. This one. About knights? Yeah, it's about knights. She's a princess knight. Oh. And a bad knight? No, that's a good guy too. Oh. They've got to team up to find the bad guys. Oh. So as I was saying, yeah, her writing has significantly improved since Wash Up the Kraken. Like, it's insane. I kept having to check, am I reading from the right author? But you can still see her pizzazz. Yeah, she's definitely grown and I love that for her so much because it's like a fake fiance sort of thing it obviously becomes real but I liked the communication that they had because once they had their first encounter he kind of just ignores her the next day because he's like oh I really shouldn't have done that and but like he's like I want to do it again and she's like well he doesn't want he's not acting like he wants to do it again so I'm not gonna do it again but then they talk, so it's not a miscommunication trope for very long sort of thing. I really I really enjoyed this and I think it's a five stars. Other than like some grammatical errors, but because this was an arc, I'm not going to rate it like that anyway. I really think this is five stars, which I'm excited because if this is five stars, the other two are predicted to be five stars as well. Maybe I just like minotaurs. All right, so next I'm going to be reading Escaping the Friend Zone. Hello. I don't think I've talked about this book yet. I'm halfway through Escaping the Friend Zone by Emily Antoinette, and I am enjoying it. So we've got Ariana, who is a bit of a mess. I can relate. She's really just in the head zone of I just got to do my work because her, she had, she's like a creator. Like she creates designs and stuff. She had one design that went viral and now her whole shop is like flying. So that's awesome for her. Look at, she's the only one person. She's just packing everything by herself and she's just running a small business by herself so pretty much. So she doesn't really do anything outside of that. So when she gets trapped in a escape room with her brother's best friend, who's also a minotaur, who's also her crush, she thinks that he doesn't like her. So she's like, oh, it's okay. Like, we don't have to do it. We'll just go home. And he's like, no, we're going to do this together. Like, if you can't take the challenge sort of thing. Anyway, go to his POV. Turns out he's liked her for as long as she's liked him. So that's really fun. He's like, let's take care of each other. They do it in the escape room. I don't know. There's like cameras there. So I'm like, what are you doing? But it was really fun. Now he's like a daddy dom. So he wants to take care of her, right? He, he wants to, her to be his baby girl. And she's like, I don't want you to wipe my ass. <laughs> he's like, I'm not into age play. Like you can relax. So yeah, it's just like them still working out their dynamics. And um, this world is pretty fun. So her brother was bitten by a werewolf. And so her and him both got 
their eyes opened pretty much to the paranormal world. And so these monsters are just walking around with glamours. And so Wesley has a human glamour. So that's why he can walk around in public and go to work and stuff. But then at home and at her house, he just shakes his glamour off and he's a minotaur. And she loves it. She loves it when he's just him. We just had a moment where she's just so in her head. She's like, I'm a mess. Like, I need to break up with him because he obviously, like, doesn't want me. I don't have time for him. I don't want to hurt him something. And he's like, what are you doing? And he, she's like, let's break. And he's like, no. And she's like, what? She's like, blubbering. And he's like, no. She's like, what? Like, no. And she's like, so thankful that he said no. So now he's, like, taking care of her, giving her a bath. But yeah. Um, I'm having a fun time. There's not a lot of plot happening. It's just these two like working on themselves and working out the relationship, which is what I'm okay about. They're keeping it a secret from their brother for all now. And I'm kind of antsy about what's going to happen when the brother finds out. I also want to know, is there going to be a story about the brother or if there is one? So I need to look that up. And also Ariana's bestie has a thing for a harpy. So I'm excited to see if there's going to be a book about that too. I just love interconnected stories. I don't know. I just, I love that. So I'm currently on sprints, my Friday night sprints. So hopefully we're all getting stuff done. Oh, and actually, before I do go, see this chunker of a book right here? This is a physical arc for The Queen Thief by Madeline Tevu. I'm very excited. But look how freaking chunky she is. I, I am scared. <laughs> I am so scared, but I'm planning to read it before I see her in November because she's coming to Supernova again and I'll get it signed. And that's going to be very exciting to have an arc signed. All right. Peace. So I have finished Escaping the Friend Zone and I will be giving it four and a half stars. Not quite a five star, but I really did enjoy the whole book. I was getting a bit scared there how they were going to resolve, like how they were going to tell the brother, but that was okay. Turns out there was kind of like a plot in the background that the readers didn't know about. Like, cause this book is a part of a bigger series. Not really a series, it's like interconnected standalones. And so she does have monster romances set in the same town. So I'm definitely very excited to pick them up because you do meet those characters in this book. I'm sorry, somebody's decided to yard work. Yeah, four and a half stars. I did realize I did not actually film an update. So that's why you're getting this at the same time as I filmed the intro for this video. Please, I did really enjoy reading this book. I just apparently didn't know how to vlog that week. Let's go to book number three. Okay, so it's Sunday night now. Should be going to bed, but I just cleaned the kitchen. I've done a little reset because school starts back tomorrow and I'm trying to be, what's the word, organized? I don't know, we'll see how we go. But I am 22% of the way into a blue ribbon romance and I'm really liking Rook's perspective. I think the first book really did need it. So I'm glad we're getting it. And we're getting like a bit of a backstory to like when the milking farm like started and the discourse around it. Cause it's the first human owned business in Cambridge Creek where that little town really prides itself on having non-human owned businesses. So I'm really liking that. I don't think we've met the chick yet. I can't remember her name, but I did like in the like author's note before the book started, let me just bring it up. She says, back in 2021, I wrote a book about a minotaur and an anxious millennial that I expected 50 people to read. It got away from me, it became no longer mine. It simultaneously became the butt of every joke and the thing everyone was trying to copy. I moved away from it and moved on. My tagline on the campaign for the lead into this book was welcome home. And that's how Blue Ribbon has felt, coming home, taking it back, giving it back to the people it was written for in the first place. Like, it's just making me tear up now. Oh my God, you scared me, Pam. And literally like, Morning Glory Milking Farm was my first ever monster romance and it literally was one of the first books that got me back in to reading back in 2021 and 
like even back into like wanting to do booktube again because I had taken a break in 2021. This is like a full circle moment for me for like this monster romance vlog, like this Minotaur reading vlog. And it's, I don't know, it's just multi-layered. It's like an onion, okay? And it's making me cry. So <laughs> I think it means I'm tired. So I'm going to go to bed now. Uh, but yeah, that was my little update. I'll catch you tomorrow, hopefully, when I do finish this book. I'm excited to see where it goes. And like, obviously we know the ending. But are we going to get his POV for some of the chapters from morning glory or it's all just going to be his POV like after the events happened sort of thing because i think she did do like a patreon only edition where she had actually mixed like mashed those two books together to make one big book so i was wondering how that would happen that's thoughts for another day red I'm tired but I finally finished blue ribbon romance I don't remember the sex scenes being that just being written like that but I think it's gonna be a four star I don't know why but I just wasn't expecting to just pretty much the whole book was just him rubbing one out I didn't really like that in flawless when that's all right with freaking talk about yeah it wasn't really that fun either in this one and I don't like I remember him being such a cinnamon roll in the first book in this one he's like a grumpy bossy butthole so yeah I don't know what to feel I don't I don't know but that does come to the end of this reading vlog and I did finish it before Tuesday the first so yay me yeah so recap what did I read I read a Yulian Sisters Guide to Getting Married, and that was five stars. I read Escaping the Friend Zone, and that was like 4.5 stars. And then I read Blue Ribbon Romance, and that was four stars. So thank you for coming along this Minotaur romance journey with me. I had so much fun. So I'll definitely be doing this more in the future. Uh, let me know down below what monster romance would you like me to try next? Like which particular monster? Yeah, give me all of your suggestions. I cannot wait to make this into a new series. Yeah, if you did get to the end of this video, pop any sort of cow or bull or minotaur emoji you can find in the comments below if you have nothing else to say. If you want to be my friend, you can add me on Goodreads, Instagram and Storygraph. It's all just at slash reads uh, don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you want to see more videos by me i hope you have a wonderful wonderful rest of your day i'll see you next time bye